What's up, YouTube? We up early with it today. I got my car started last night. It was something simple. I just wasn't motivated to work on it. But what I'm getting ready to do is actually move my truck out the way, bring the cutlass over in the center of the garage a little bit, and go over my MSD Atomic 2 EFI system. Go over how I hooked it up, listen to it sound, listen to how it sound. I haven't taken the car on a ride yet, so maybe I'll go on like a 10 minute cruise to see how my vitals and everything work. So stick tight, hang on tight. I'm about to move the truck, move the car over and we're gonna get something rocking this morning. What's up, YouTube? It's been a couple days since I first started this video. Probably about two or three days. But number one, I did get the car started. I took the car for a little ride. The car stopped about with well, a truck in the way, but it stopped in the middle of the street during my ride. And I fixed it in the middle of the street and I drove it back in the garage. <laughs> but I was able to get it out it's good. I know what's wrong with it. I know I, what I need to do to it in order to get it running properly. But let's go for it. I want to give you the backstory on how I ended up going with the MSD Atomic 2 system. I initially ordered, excuse me, I initially ordered the sniper system with the in-tank pump. So I have the brand new tank and it has the pump in, you know, the fuel pump located inside of the tank. It was going in about three or four weeks. I ended up calling Holly and asking them, hey, is it on back order? When will I get it? You know, I get email saying this and route. I get another email saying next week, what's going on? So the salesman reached out to me, said, hey, you know what? It's on back order, super long, but we do have another system. It's called Atomic 2, made by MSD. And cool thing about it, Holly owns MSD. They bought them out. So it's basically the same exact kit. <clears throat> as the, I mean, the same exact software, everything is the same one, which is all right, pretty cool. All right, so let's go to the car. I'm actually going to start front and back. That's why I started out at with installing this system. I started with the gas tank. So let's go back here and see what's going on. All right, so I'm showing this video. I had to drop the gas tank. And the reason why I wanted to go with the in tank pump, because I did not know where I wanted to mount my fuel pump anywhere along the frame but what I ended up doing i ended up making this bracket i don't know if you can see it now i'll post another picture bought some sheet metal and i attached my fuel pump and a fuel filter to it and i had some 20 foot lines and basically i ran the lines along the frame where my factory fuel lines are at the car <clears throat> So they're going along the frame, inside of the frame, so you won't even be able to see them. And it took me to the front of the car. So for this kit, I have to run. I had to run a return line. I did it already. Um, this is the center unit that was on my car already. As you see, it's no return. I could have kept it in there and just drilled a hole inside of my gas tank, but I didn't want to drill a hole in my gas tank. And also. There's no telling how old this sitting unit is, so I didn't want it to go out and have to drop everything. And as I look at it, the wire's kind of frayed too. So glad I did it. All I did was get on Rock Auto and I ordered me another return line that was for my car. It dropped right into the gas tank. Another Cine unit that was for my car dropped right into the gas tank and it already had a return on it already. I'm about to post a picture of it right now. That way you can see exactly what I ordered. Another thing about this system, it required you to run a return line. So I took my regular fuel lines, the steel lines, and I made that my return. So I have it running to here. This is my fuel regulator. In order to run a system properly, you need at least 55 to 61 foot pounds of fuel pressure going through. And this is my return. And just a second ago, like I mentioned I had to run a new fuel line. And this is my fuel line. So this is my primary and hooked up in the back right there is my return. 
once I have my fuel lines ran, the next thing for me to do is to was to take off my carburetor. Now I'll show a video of it right here of me taking off the car. And as soon as you take off the carburetor, next step is to put on the actual EFI unit in its place. So what I like about this system is it's plug and play. After I take the carburetor off, it's like five plugs to make it go. First one is right here. This is my coolant temperature sensor right here. Just plug right into the block. Uh, uh, the next one is inside of the car, but it is my connector for my screen. I'll walk in and show you that in a second. Well, I can do it now because it's on this side. It's a little screen that tells me every single thing that's going on. I need to install it, but here's my small little screen. The DS-118. Um, next one we have, I did the cooling sensors, cooling main harness connector. I installed the harness right back there against the firewall. Oxygen sensor connector. So that's up under the car. I had to plug in the oxygen connector O2 sensor basically put well, the connector up top and it comes down comes down to the o2 sensor which is right here i think i showed it and it's a green wire that goes all the way to the back of the car that plugs right into my fuel pump all right so i just jumped inside of the car I'm just gonna crank it up real quick key in You hear my fuel pump priming, pushing the fuel from the gas tank to the motor. Turn the key and start right up. Come with this little monitor, let you know everything that's going on. So you have my RPM, fuel pressure, battery, throttle positioning sensor, throttle positioning sensor. And it has nice throttle response. I don't know if you can tell, I revved it up a little bit. Nice. This is a nice upgrade, pretty cool upgrade from the carburetor, <clears throat> especially depending on where you want to go. I had this car for a while, so I went through Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Turn the key, nothing. Pump, turn the key, nothing. So you know how the old schools go. What I'm going to do now, just step out the car. Just have a seat over there. We're going to talk about what happened yesterday. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I started the first initial video uh, when I was on the car. I had another day where I had on like a red Detroit vs. Everybody hoodie. A couple more days went past, but I want to go ahead and finish it up. So I did take the car out, like I said before, uh, batted it out the driveway, drove it down the cul-de-sac, brought it back home, and it wouldn't start. It cut off on me, like two or three houses down. Wouldn't start back up. After a little bit of research, I figured that the bolts, I have a spacer on my intake. So the bolts that's connecting the spacer to the intake, they were too short and it became loose. So the, the carb unit wouldn't even sit on top of the intake anymore. <laughs> I'll straighten that up and put it back in the garage. But the car started up good. Um, the car drove good. I have good fuel pressure, which is supposed to be between 55 and 60 PSI. I'm running right at 60. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. A few more things about it. So when I first put the unit on the car, let me go all the way back to the beginning. I didn't have fuel pressure. It was about 20 PSI, 30 PSI. As soon as I give it, like I bagged down my driveway, and as soon as I tried to come back in, it shut off, wouldn't come in. So the reason why I didn't install the regulator, I was under the impression my cousin at home, he has a 70 Chevelle, he has the Holly Sniper, and the Holly Sniper has an internal regulator built in. So I had the conversation with him, I was just under the impression that, oh, it's the same thing, made by the same company, I also have an internal regulator, no. Um, your engine has to be in excellent running condition. So you can't just put this unit on a raggedy motor that's misfiring on piston, whatever, and expect it to run flawless. No, my motor is good. It is a rebuild motor. I don't even have a hundred miles on the rebuild, 
But as I was putting a few things together and doing a little bit of research um, with my car, I have a couple of vacuum leaks. So the unit goes on your car with the expectation that you have an excellent, you have a good running motor, and I'm just gonna tune myself to this good running motor. So if you don't have an excellent tune or vacuum leaks and just a not good running motor, the unit is confused trying to figure out, okay, why is it running like this? It's trying to basically adjust itself to whatever it has going on inside the motor. So once again, mine is good, but I found a few vacuum leaks that I need to um, <clears throat> repair before I take it on the road and do a drive. Um, as far as a review for what I have going on now, I do like it. It's simple. I like the fact that I don't have to pump the gas to get it going, to get it started. I can just turn the key and prime and it start right up. Um, a few things for the future, what I plan on doing to it. It's inside the box. I'm going to take it out and show you. Well, I don't feel like taking it out, but I have an electric fan. They were hooked up to a radiator that was a buddy of mine repaired that was inside of a Caprice, but it's a dual fan set. So eventually I'm going to take off this fan. I mean, it runs good to keep the motor, it keeps the car warm. Well, it keeps it cool. It don't run hot or anything. But I'm just going to take it off just to take it off to upgrade and also clean these wires up. I don't like the way that look. I'm more of a neat guy and I just threw it together just to see if I can get it running. Now that it's running, I'm going to clean up everything up under here. All right, so main reason that I want to go ahead and get the car running and together is, is going to the paint shop August, no, not August, April 1st. So I have about a month and a half. So I wanted to have it going. I didn't want to drag it to the shop. I want to drive it to the shop. Once they were get, they get done at the body shop, I want to be able to drive away from the shop and not have to get a trailer and haul it home or even worry about any little bump or whatever I might do. In the meantime, while I'm working on it, I hate for all that stuff to happen while it's in the shop getting painted. But next video, I'm going to do some repairs to it. <clears throat> I have a vacuum leak. So I'll, I do have the vacuum line I'm going to replace. I bought a PCV valve, just a new one, because there was some air coming from there too. Another grommet, clean up my wires that's under it, and hopefully then I can get out on the street and take it for a ride. But once again, one thing about this unit, I like it so far. I mean, the car starts up easy. I can put it in gear and drive off. But I just have some little miscellaneous repairs that I want to do before I take it on the road. And that'll be the next video. We're going to repair it, and we're going to finally take it for a drive. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any comments, and once again, if you have any suggestions that you may have for me uh, for what I should do with the car, or even about the EFI system, if you do have one, let me know your thoughts. What do you think about it? All right, you all. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. See you soon.